Hello and welcome to AnyLogic Array Library webinar. My name is Arash Madavi and I'll be your host today. In this webinar, we are going to build a railware network by automatically converting GIS shapefiles into AnyLogic rail markups, implementing the safe movement of trains and preventing trains from collision, placing trains and rail yards on GIS map, implementing uh, train movement between rail yards on a GIS map, and building a simple classification yard is going to be our agenda for today's webinar. And at the end, I will answer your questions. So let's take a look at the overview of, overview of the model so we get to know what this model is trying to do before we start uh, uh, seeing the uh, model building process. So this is the model in any logic eight. Um, we have two rail yards uh, uh, in Minneapolis and Chicago. So the Minneapolis uh, rail yard is going to be um, a simple yard that um, maybe trains are coming in and they wait here for some inspection time and they will leave. So it's going to be a simple maintenance yard. Um, the yard network that you will see here, we will bring it from a shapefile. We are not going to manually build that. So we are converting shapefiles into any logic markups. Then we build the logic of this, this yard and eventually the trains that are um, go, went through in, uh, inspection in this yard will leave Minneapolis yard and they go into uh, the um, Chicago yard. Here, Chicago yard will be a simple classification yard that all these incoming trains will be uh, classified into smaller uh, trains and they eventually leave Chicago. And if you look into the main, you will see that we connect the, these two yards uh, on a like an overview in a GIS map again. So all the trains that are leaving Minneapolis will um, move through this GIS map and eventually get to uh, Chicago for classification. So I guess we are ready now to watch the uh, model building process. And after that, um, I will come back to answer your questions. Again, remember that you can answer your questions in the tab that is on the uh, GoToWebinar app. Let's start by Minneapolis rail yard, which is a simple maintenance yard. First, to start a new model, we name it um, Railway Network, and model time units should be in minutes. Okay, so now we have the model. The first thing is to add a new agent. I use this wizard from the agent palette. I call the agent name um, Minneapolis, that's going to be agent type and the name of the agent itself is going to be the similar with a lowercase m. So double click on it. So now we are inside the Minneapolis agent type. We add a GIS map. We want to import the shape file representing this rail yard. I point to the shape file that I have on my hard drive. Okay, we already, already imported shape files into the map. I can see the rail network here. I have focus uh, on the, the section that I want to use in this webinar. This is the yard that we're going to use. Zoom in. So when I in a correct um, location I convert it into any logic space markups. Okay, so we have the networks now. As you can see, we have several networks here. I have to only select the one that I want. Let's select the rest and delete them. Okay, I can click on it. And I uncheck visible on the upper level so that we don't see this network on main, which is the upper level. Okay, so the rail yard is ready for the next steps. Okay, before we start uh, going to the logical blocks, let's focus on the network itself. If you click on any part of this network, you will see that by default from the imported shape file, we have some directions here. I want to um, change um, the direction of all these tracks to point to north of this canvas. This is, you can keep the default um, imported direction but if you do this everything will be in the same direction and it will be easier to know how to define the logics later. 
okay at this point I'm going to start adding the logical block so I went to the rail library palette and, I, and then added a train source interarrival time should be one minute limited number of arrivals only one train comes in and the number of cars that will be added into this train each, each incoming train will be 30 so we are going to add a custom train type just keep the default and custom uh, rail car okay I, I select this 3d shape I will add a second 3d shape from the, the 3d palette this is going to be box car I select them both and make them invisible so at the beginning they, they are both invisible so we, we shouldn't be able to see the cars okay so we have the settings so now we have train and rail car as the new types. Okay, let's add two populations, two empty populations for trains and also for rail cars. So we are going to use these empty populations to add each incoming train or car uh, to them. Okay, so let's focus on the animation that we built for these uh, rail cars make them invisible on upper level agent which is main going back to the train source I add each incoming train or rail car to these two new added populations okay everything is set for the train source okay now we have to set the entry point of the train I will add a position on track at this location on this track okay and then I have to link that position on track to the source so basically anytime a new train comes in it will appear at that location these two are connected now okay next is to add a train move to so that we can move the incoming train to a specific location Okay, first thing is to keep it forward, means that the direction of the train and the track is going to be the same. Route is calculated automatically. Target is going to be a specific offset on a track. So let's, let's select the track that we want this incoming train to go to. Let's select this one. We're going to change it eventually. And we are going to say that the, the train should stop 100 meter from the end of the track okay so now these two are connected the next thing is I'm going to the process modeling library and add a delay this is a time that this this um, train will stop at that location and change it to minutes and it's going to be a triangular distribution of minimum of 5 mode of 10 and maximum of 15 and the delay should have maximum capacity so multiple trains can can be in the in the delay at the same time okay the train comes in stops there for let's say 15 minutes and then it leaves so for the leaving part we have to add the second train move to okay it's still going to be forward because all of our tracks are the same direction a given offset on the track we select this end track and it should be from the end of the track with zero offset meaning the end of the track and lastly we'll add a train dispose and let's run the model and, and see okay I double click on the agent on main I go inside Minneapolis I see that the logical blocks are working but I can't see the train or the ra rail cars so let's see what was the issue so when we've added the rail cars both of the agent representations or animation that we've added were invisible so we have to go back to the train source car setup and make them visible based on the index of the car so if car index equals to zero the car 
locomotive icon should be visible. So you, you see that I cannot select that. So because the rail car type is not selected correctly, so I change it to rail car going back and say, okay, if the index is zero, which is the first car, then make the locomotive icon visible. Else for the rest of the cars, the rest of 30, 29 um, cars in the model, make them make the box car icon visible. Okay, let's run the model again and see if we can actually see the train now. Double click on the Minneapolis agent. Okay, now you will see a, a train coming in. It went to the, the track that we selected. It waits there for some time between 5 to 15 minutes and eventually it leaves and goes to the end of this end track. Okay, so far we had only one train coming in. That was because of this setting that we had in the train source. Maximum number of variables was one. So let's set, change it to six. So we have six tracks here. And um, we don't want for two trains to be able to go to one track at the same time. So what I'm going to do is to select all these six tracks, right click on it and build a collection, which is a list of all those tracks, right? So now we have all of them in one place. So, okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is to let each train to pick one of these tracks and go there. But at the same time, that track should be removed from this collection. So no other train can take it and get there. Okay, so we are going to write a piece of code that does that for us. Okay, for the train move to, I'm going to select one of the tracks from this collection. And the way I'm doing it, I point to the collection and remove one of the tracks from that. At the same time, this method returns a track that I've selected. The index of the track would be a value between 0 and n minus 1, uh, n being the number of tracks that we have. Therefore, we, we type something like this, a discrete value between 0 and the track collection size minus 1. And it picks one of those available tracks at that moment and removes it from the collection, returns it as the railroad track that we use for this train move to. Okay, so let's run the model and see if it behaves the way that we want it to. We're inside Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. All these six trains are coming in and they wait for a while and then they leave. Okay, so you see that it's possible that several trains are leaving at the same time and there will be some collision. Okay, so we have to figure out how we can avoid this collision. For doing that, we can use a method of adding a resource and, and assuming that resource is the location that both of these trains are trying to seize at the same time. So we add a seize and release um, blocks around the train move to. We have a resource pool of one. And then we have, we connect the seize block with the resource pool. So basically we have one available resource being that location. And therefore only one uh, train can m leave at the same time. Um, and when that train is leaving, because it sees the resource, the rest has to wait in the queue of the seize block. Okay, let's look at it now. You can see that there is no collision because of the one resource to be assigned to this location. So whenever a train is leaving, it sees that resource and it doesn't let the others to use that location. At this point, I want to add two new features to the model. When a, whenever a train leaves, a new train will be arriving at the yard. And at the same time, we have to update the track's collection. At this point, I have to add back the track that was occupied by the leaving train. For doing so, I go to the train move to block, train move to one, which is the block that takes the train out of the model. And I'm going to say that Whenever this, this train is leaving the track, add its track back to the track's collection, making it available to the rest of the incoming trains. 
The other thing that I wanted to add is the feature that whenever a train leaves the yard, another train enters this yard. And there should be like a 20 minutes delay between that departure and arrival. For doing so, I'm going to add an event and I'm going to select a timeout that is user control. The timeout is going to be 20 minutes. The action that is related to this event is going to injecting a new train into the model. I'm going to use the train source dot inject, which injects one train into the yard. Then I go back to the unenter of train move to one, and I say whenever the train leaves the yard, this event should restart again. And when that restarts, 20 minutes later, a new train comes in. So let's just run the model again, go inside Minneapolis, and let's, let's take a look at what's happened, what's going to happen when a train leaves the yard. So okay, all the, the first six trains are leaving, and you can see that the tracks are going back to the collection, and there will be available tracks for the, each newcomer, and they, they go into that track, and every 20 minutes after the departure of each train, a new one will arrive. Okay, now it's time to move to Chicago Rail Yard, which is going to be a simple classification yard. We're going to add a new agent, similar to what we've done for Minneapolis. We go to Agent Palette, we use this wizard, we select a single agent, the agent type name would be Chicago, and the agent name will be Chicago with a lowercase c. We have to go inside agent type that belongs to Chicago and we go through the same similar like procedure that we've done for Minneapolis to import and convert um, shape files into any logic uh, spa space markups. So we select the shape file. So Chicago rail yards are now on the map. We zoom in into the location that we want to. So it's important to zoom in into that location. Otherwise, everything that is visible at that view at the moment will be converted into uh, space markups. We wanted to zoom in to just select the portion that we want. Then we convert the shape files into railway um, space markups. Again, we, we might have some extra networks that we don't want. We go to Chicago agent type is select those extra rail networks and we delete them all then I select this network uncheck visible on upper level and I move it to the right so we have some space in the middle to draw our logical blocks similar to what we've done in Minneapolis I want to make all the directions of these tracks uniform first I want to modify these two tracks. So I will add a track that connects these two together and any logic automatically will uh, build the switches for me as well. So I click on this railroad track and I draw a track between these two so I can move between these two if, if I need to. Okay, next thing as I said I'm going to make all the directions of these uh, tracks to be in the same direction. So I change them all to, to direct to the south of this um, canvas. Okay, I select them one by one and change their directions if they are northward. Okay, and we need to do the same thing for the end point or end track and it's already in the correct direction. So we are ready to start building our logical blocks. To save some time, let's copy paste this train source and the connected populations into Chicago. So we already have set things up for this train source so we can reuse it here. We have to make some changes. For example, we are going to change the minimum number of arrivals back to one, so one train comes in. And then here we have to show presentation of the rail cars and make them uh, invisible on upper level as well. 
Okay, so we have this thing uh, set up. Now I have to put the incoming train into a position on a track. I will add a new position in the track at this track. Okay, so you see it's the right one. And because it has the same name as what we already had in Minneapolis, it's going to be set up correctly. So whenever a new train comes into the yard, I want it to stay on this track, which I'm going to rename to track arrival. So each incoming train will stay here for a while. And this is the location that the train stay to be classified. Next thing is to add the track move to right after the source and move uh, this incoming train into, um, into the arrival track that we just renamed. Okay, we click on the train move to, it's going to be forward, ca calculated automatically it's a, on a given offset on a track and I'm going to select the track that I've just renamed, track arrival. The train should stay at the middle of this track. So I'm going to select uh, from the end of the track and offset on this track is going to be track length divided by two, which is going to be the middle of the track. So, so I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So when the tra train comes in, it's going to select this arrival track and stay in the middle. Next step is to decouple some cars from this incoming train and send them to be uh, classified. So I need a train decouple right after the train move to and then I need a train couple right after that train decouple. Um, I go inside the train decouple and I start uh, decoupling some cars from it. The new train that will come out of this train decouple is also going to be of type train. The number of cars that I'm going to decouple is it's going to be a value between 5 to 10. So I'm using this uniform distribution between 5 to 10. But also I have to make sure that the value is not more than the train size. So therefore I put it inside this minimum of train size and uniform discrete between 5 and 10. And when that happens, let's say five cars are decoupled and then I want to move them to the end of this, uh, this track, which I'm going to rename to track departure. So this is going to be the end track. And for that, so I'm going to add another move to right after the train decoupled and I will move the decoupled train to, the, to that um, departure track. It's going to be forward calculate it automatically so it's going to be a given offset on a track let's select that uh, offset on a track and then I'm going to say it's going to be the departure track that I've just renamed it's going to be from the beginning of the track because of the direction of this let's select this you see the beginning uh, of this is going to be that side and I'm going to say takes maybe like uh, train length plus 50 meters so it just moves 50 meters um, into that track and stops okay let's add a train dispose so that after that that, that we are not going to follow the, the decoupled train let's run it and see how it looks like slow it down a little bit I double click on Chicago so I can see what's going on inside the Chicago rail yard the train is coming in it goes to the track arrival decoupled and then it left okay so if you look at the logical blocks in this um, train decouple you see that one train is there this is a train that stays at the track arrival um, okay Next is to make a collection of all these tracks that we are going to use for classification. So I made a collection. There are four tracks inside it. I rename it to Tracks Collection. Okay, we are going to add a new train move to right after the, the, the coupled track 
reach this location, I'm going to bring it back to one of those options, one of those tracks that we've added to the um, collection. It's going to be backward because it's going in a backward direction given offset on a track and the track that we are going to select is going to uh, we are going to randomly select it from one of the tracks that we've added to the collection so the, the function or method that we're going to use is random from we pass the collection into it and it randomly picks one of those collections and when the, the train tries to get to that uh, track we send it to the middle of that therefore I, I type track length divided by two okay so let's run it again see if it behaves as I expected so the train should enter from that position on the track it goes to the arrival track it decouples so this, dec this decoupled train moves to this location then it moves backward towards one of these four options that we had, one of those four tracks. And eventually should disappear because we have a dis train disposed right afterwards, so we haven't modeled that part yet. Okay, now I'm going to delete this train dispose and I'm going to decouple the locomotive from the rest of the decoupled train. For doing that, I'm going to add a new train decouple delete this extra link so we have a train decouple I add the train couple right after that so it's gonna the rest of the, the, the decoupled train will stay in the train couple one okay and then I copy paste this um, train move to one which takes the train to the end uh, to the um, to a location on the departure track so I want to to take this locomotive to that location again so I don't need to start from scratch or copy it and then I add a train dispose um, going back to the train decouple one I say the new train is going to be a train and I'm only going to decouple one car which will be the locomotive itself okay if I run the model going inside Chicago agent train enters a yard goes to the departure um, to the arrival track gets decoupled so this new decoupled train moves toward the this position on the departure track moves backward towards one of the tracks in the classification yard that randomly choose from the, tra the track collection and at this point the locomotive gets uh, decoupled and it moves towards the end track. Now it's time to bring back the decoupled train to the track arrival and couple it with the remainder of the original train so it gets coupled with that and we continue the process. So I add a train move to 4. It's going to be calculated automatically it's gonna be a offset on a track and the track that I'm going to select is a track arrival and it's and the offset is going to be beginning of the track as I'm showing here with the offset of zero so it forces the locomotive to um, hit the remainder of the original train that is sitting on the track arrival so let's take a look at how it looks like. So the train comes in, gets decoupled. This decoupled train selects one of these tracks. Okay, the locomotive is, is decoupled and now it goes back toward the original train and now it hits it. Okay, as you can see, the locomotive hit the um, the parked train a track arrival and I'm going to use this out hit port of train move to to couple this locomotive to the remainder of the original train this is how I do it so now they are 
coupled together and this new coupled train can go through the same process similar to what happened to the original train so we send it back to the beginning of the process so we can continue the decoupling of the rest of the cars so let's take a look at it during the runtime inside Chicago the new train comes in first decouples happens the new train moves toward the end goes back locomotive gets decoupled now it goes back toward the original train so it will hit with that but now it's gonna decouple because it, it exits from that out hit port and now we have a new train decoupled that that moves toward the same process so it again goes to the end moves back toward the one of these uh, tracks in the collection and this process continues at some point uh, the the train might move toward an already classified cars so they might hit and again as you can see it, it tries to get out of the out hit port of this train move to and I've, I have to make some adjustments to the model I need a train couple here let's add one from the ray library palette and this is the out hit port of train move 2 and I'm gonna connect it to this train couple and these are the this is going to be the train that hits the already classified um, cards and the rest when this um, new train is gonna get coupled um, you should continue the process the only thing that I need is a select output right after the train decouple one what the select output does it checks the size of the incoming train and says if it's more than 10 so it's already done it's classified it's complete and I send it to the train couple one which is on the right side of it and it sits there to be picked um, else if it's if it's less than 10 so it goes there and waits in the train uh, couple two um, so it gets complete later by um, the locomotive that brings the rest of the cars okay so let's run it so as you can see the the original train starts to get decoupled so, and if for some reason they hit so it's it works it understands how to handle this now just moves it goes back and forth and uh, just takes the rest of the original train all the cars to this classification tracks and at the end okay it just moves towards it and it doesn't know what to do so it just goes to the train dispose so we have to continue completing this logic at this point I want to look into the completed train so when a train is complete it's gonna stay in the train couple one let's move it here and add the necessary logic to handle this a completed train what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this train uh, source so it becomes train source 1 and it's going to be call of inject function so we are going to manually call it the number of cars is going to be one It's just going to be one locomotive that comes in and picks up the completed um, train um, I add a queue right after it and it's going to be maximum capacity when I add a train, I'm not adding it to a specific location on the rail network. Uh, I set it up to be a, leaves as a logical entity, which eventually goes to the queue and sits there uh, to, to be used in the rest of the process. 
Uh, I'm going to add a new position on a track. This is going to be the second one, which is point on track one. Here, at this point, I'm adding a new block called train enter. The train enter block is helping us to model the transition from that logical block into a train that we can actually put on a position on a track, as I'm doing it right now. And it's going to be a forward um, orientation with the same direction as the track is. And I add a train move to right after that. It's going to be calculated automatically, given offset on a track. And we have to set up which track this new locomotive has to go to pick up the completed train. Let's keep it empty for the moment and I need to add some other stuff into the model and eventually we'll do that. Let's uh, connect train move to 5 to the train couple 1 and this is going to be the where the incoming uh, locomotive gets coupled with the completed train and then the completed train will move backward toward the uh, position that I've added on the track. It's going to be position 1. And at the end, uh, this completed train will leave the model. I remove this train disposal from that part, which is not going to be used again. And I add it to the train move to 6. Um, I'm going to add a variable. And this variable points to a track that the completed train is on at that moment. So I call it track ready. And the type is going to be other, and it's going to be a railway track. You can use control space to find it on the AnyLogic API. Okay, railway track. Whenever a track is ready, it, it enters this train couple one, and it happens on enter one. So at that moment, I'm going to say this track ready variable that we added equals to the track of that specific completed train. So we record that value so we know which track um, basically has the completed train. And now that we know that we have a completed train, I'm telling the train source to inject one train into um, this process. And that logical train will be added to the queue to be used later. If you look at this start move to, if you remember, we kept this target track empty. Now I'm going back to inside the train agent type and I'm adding a new parameter. I name it uh, track destination. And the type of this parameter, again, sh it should be a railway track. You can use control space to find it in the Neologic API. Okay, so we have that class there as the type of that parameter. And whenever we inject this new train to the model, I'm going to go on exit of the train source one, and I tell the train, the incoming train, which is the locomotive, that your destination will be equal to the value of track ready variable, which we already set um, in the train couple one. Okay, so now each locomotive can look into that parameter's value and move towards that set uh, destination, train dot track destination. So by doing this, we correctly uh, sending the incoming locomotive to the completed train on the track. Let's go into Chicago. Let's watch the process. So the original train starts to get decoupled. This process is happening till we um, we have a completed um, train, which should have more than ten cars in it. When we have more than 10 cars, a new train should, a new locomotive, as you can see, should come in and start picking up, picking it up. But as you can see, this new locomotive, when it came in, it hits the completed train or all the cars that were uh, 
uh, parking there and it tried to get out of this hit out port of the train move to five but it wasn't able to do so um, so to make this thing work instead of connecting it to the out port we have to connect uh, that to the out hit port of the train move to if we look at it again now this time it should be able to um, behave correctly so we are starting to decouple derived the original train the locomotive goes back and forth decouples another portion of the, the train and start to classify it in this classification yard speed it up so now we have a completed train locomotive came in picked up the completed uh, train and and took it out of the model scope let's run the model again and take a look at the end of this decl declassification process for the incoming train uh, let's just change our view zoom in a little bit so we can see it better and speed it up okay so the original train is all declassified the locomotive has goes back to the track arrival but it doesn't know what to do because it gets to the end of that track and we didn't handle that part so we don't know what to do with the original locomotive and we have to handle it like um, right now at this point so when when the locomotive is done and there is n there is no car left to be classified i wanted to check that and don't send the locomotive back to the track arrival so we have to test a condition before we send it back uh, to pick the rest of the cars. So for that reason, I need a select output block from the process modeling library. Don't show the name so it becomes clearer. And the condition is if the track arrival is not empty. So we use is empty and we put an exclamation mark at the beginning, which is the reverse of that. It means is not empty. And when that track is not empty, then we can send it back. Otherwise, uh, we have to handle that condition. And this condition is when we classified all the cards of that train. We want to send it to the end. So I copy this train move to here. This train move to one, which sends the truck to the end. And this is the locomotive that has to leave the model. So it moves towards the end and eventually leaves the model by going to the train dispose instead of sending it to a like a 50 meters from the beginning of the track I'm just saying from the end of the track and it's going to be zero so it goes to the end of that departure track One other scenario that could be problematic is if several completed trains try to leave at the same time. Um, to make sure that something like this could not happen, I'm going to limit the number of trains that can enter this part of the process. So for doing that, we need a restricted area start and end that let only one train to, to be in this part of the process. So we start by adding uh, a new restricted area start and then a restricted area end that is connected to that restricted area start so it won't let more than one train to be in this part of the logic at a time which resolves that problem now we are ready to run the model and see the final result let's slow down the model a little bit go inside Chicago expand the view zoom in and this is the train that arrived decoupled 
the coupled train will be taken to one of those tracks and we start we start and we continue this uh, classification process so the locomotive goes back and forth classifying the train let's speed it up eventually we have more than 10 cars uh, classified which lets another locomotive to come in pick them up and take them out of the model take them out of the yard so we can see that this is the the last cars from the original train now the locomotive left and we had another completed train that was picked up with a locomotive now um, it's time to start connecting these two yards together so far what we have is uh, two agents Chicago and Minneapolis and when you run a model uh, you have local models that happening inside each of these agents Chicago and Minneapolis and you can see them separately and they, there's no connection between these two models what we are going to do in the next step is to connect them in a way that the trains that get out of Minneapolis will eventually um, move to Chicago to get classified to do so first we add a GIS map in Maine and then we have to put these agents on the map so we have different options latitude longitude uh, in a specific node or even search for a specific location on a map. I'm going to use this um, GIS node. And I manually pick those locations based on that specific location on the rail network. So I zoom in, I found uh, find the location of the rail yard in Minneapolis, I change it to GIS point Minneapolis, zoom out, going back to Chicago, find that route uh, find that um, yard there at a new GIS point call it Chicago so if I zoom out now I have two GIS points on the map and then I go back to each of these agents and select the correct node for their initial location let's run the model and if you look at the model the GIS map on the main you see these two small dots representing the GIS node that I just added, but you don't see an animation representing each of these uh, yards. To do so, you have to go inside the Minneapolis and Chicago agent types, and you can add a specific animation for that. Um, this is what I'm going to use for Minneapolis, and I then go to Chicago, pictures palette and add this icon for it and then we have to show presentation for each of these agents if we run it we will see those two shapes as a representation of those agents on the GIS map for Chicago and Minneapolis I want the trains that are leaving Minneapolis to go to Chicago yard for classification but at the moment they go to train dispose and get destroyed at the end of their process instead of that I'm going to add a train enter here and the trick that we are going to use here is that we are going to wrap this train object this specific type of agents these train agents into a logical or generic agent and then we use that generic or logical agent to move on a GIS map in Maine and when they get into Chicago again we use the the train agent that was wrapped in that logical agent to move in the Chicago's logical block so for that reason first I'm going to add a source and the location of this incoming agents will be the location of this GIS point Minneapolis on Maine so this is the logical 
agent that I'm going to use instead of the train basically wrapping up the train inside it so then I need a pickup for putting this wrap a wrapper around this um, train agent we need a queue right after the train exit now I'm connecting the queue to the in pickup port of the pickup block if you look into the condition it says uh, always two so as long as something is inside the queue it will pick it up and uh, in the queue whenever something enters something is going to be an, a, tr um, a, a train we're going to inject a new agent into the pickup that picks up that train wraps it in the logical agent and then it sends it out to send it out we have to we are going to build a custom block so we need an icon so first of all I'm using the same shape that I used for the um, Minneapolis animation I set it to be an icon I added a port to its uh, right side and I connect the, uh, the exit port of the pickup to that port basically what it means is whatever is exiting the pickup block it looks like that it exits the port of this custom icon that I've added uh, for the Minneapolis yard if I go to main you see that we have this custom block with this icon as we can see it here we use the same shape to be representative of its animation on the GIS map we have to do the similar thing that we've done in Minneapolis in Chicago yard so instead of having a train source that injects new trains into the yard I'm going to add the trains that lead the left uh, Minneapolis object and add them to the Chicago yard so for doing so let's reorganize our logical blocks if we make some room for the new block that we want to add here I need uh, an icon that represents this um, custom object. I'm using the same object, uh, the same shape that I use for its uh, shape. I add a port to its left. You don't want to show the name of the port, so I check that one. and we make sure that this is an icon representing this um, custom object we need a queue hold a drop off and a sink here Let's connect this port to the queue. Any train that arrives from Minneapolis first goes to this queue, Q1 that has maximum capacity. Then we have a hold block right after that. We set it to be block automatically after N agents. We set it to one, so it only lets one train to to enter the Chicago yard we will, we will uh, add some setting later that lets the rest of the trains to get in one by one but first we let one in so this drop-off is actually paired with the pickup block that we added in Minneapolis in Minneapolis we wrapped a logical agent around the train here we want to unwrap it in the drop-off part and then we need an enter block instead of the um, source to add this unwrapped train from inside this logical agent and put it inside the Chicago yard this is what I'm going to do so we click on the train enter and it's going to be a position on track so when this uh, train comes in and we select the correct position so now when this train that left 
Minneapolis enters Chicago, it will be put on that position. If you remember, the source was connected to these two populations. Here we have to manually move the agents that are inside Minneapolis, uh, agents being the train and the cars, to these two populations. First, uh, for all the cars inside the train, I'm going to add them one by one to the rail cars population. So we have this method called um, go to population and we pass these rail cars one by one to this population. Okay, and we also um, gonna move the train itself to this trains population. Train that go to population, and the population is trains. Let's compile it. I have an error message. I double click on it, so I forgot to put uh, to put a correct syntax for the loop. I need i less than train dot size. Let's compile it again. No error message. Finally, it's, it's time to add a piece of code to let more um, trains to come in. If you remember in the hold, we automatically block it after one train comes in. So when this train um, is classified and done and it leaves the model, we want to let another train to come in. For doing so, I add uh, this code to the unenter of the last train move to to unblock the hold when the when the train leaves going back to main you can see that chicago has its own icon and now we have two ports in these two custom objects that we can connect to each other so they will be on these two gis points on the map and i'm going to use a move to block to connect these two together so the agents that are leaving Minneapolis will move to Chicago. This is what I'm going to do. When we build the agents in Minneapolis, we put them on GIS point underline Minneapolis and move to will move them to the another GIS point, which is the Chicago location. And we also want to set the speed to be 50 miles per hour for the trains. And lastly, we have to make sure that we are using the correct uh, type of road. By default, it's going to be car for each GIS map. We change it to rail. So now these moving agents, we use a uh, rail uh, network to move from Minneapolis to Chicago. To be able to click on these icons and see what's going on inside each of these yards, I add this piece of code on click of these two icons return true, both for the icon representing Chicago and representing Minneapolis. So during the runtime, I can click on those icons and see what's happening inside that specific yard. Now we will be able to run the entire model and these two are now connected to each other. So if we look at it, like this, we can click on it and can see what's happening inside Minneapolis. Um, trains are coming into this um, maintenance yard. They wait for uh, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get the maintenance inspection they need and they will leave one by one. So at the beginning we have six that come at the very um, short period of time so it's very close to each other then every 20 minutes afterwards there will be another one leaving Minneapolis so if, if I increase the speed of the model you will see that these are the trains and these are wrapped inside a logical agent and these icons that you see are representing those agents on the main they move toward another one so you see the first six are close to each other and then we have another one coming in every 20 minutes. So far, n none of these trains have reached uh, Chicago. So let's wait till they reach Chicago. Okay, now we have some trains inside Chicago. Okay, so if I go inside Chicago, 
agent. I can see what's going on there. You see that these incoming um, trains are getting classified and eventually they will leave Chicago. So the classification happens as we expected and we might have some trains that are waiting to be classified at the moment. There is none. So because the, the 20 minutes time that we set for the interarrival times is long enough to let them classify it one by one. So there's uh, no train waiting in a queue there. So as you saw, we started with two separate agents and now they are custom objects that are connected in a flowchart and trains that are leaving Minneapolis eventually get to Chicago. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, model building process. Um, we had your questions here, so I'm going to go through all those questions and answer them one by one. First question, is seize uh, and release available only for rail or can, can it be used for any type of agents? Yeah, you can use it for any type of agents. So the, this um, logic that we use, for example, to um, only send one train at, at, at once, by using a seize release. It's just a generic uh, process modeling library uh, object that you can use for any type of process-centric model. It could be a hospital, if you have a resource pool of nurses, it could be a uh, factory floor that you have specific locations at resources or forklifts at resources. It could be any. In this case, it's the physical space that we associate with those um, trains. Uh, Second question, can you scale train up to be more visible? So uh, if you look into um, your models, each one of these agent types has a scale. And because we use the shapefile, we brought in um, those um, locations from the shapefiles, um, we might be, um, so this is actually a, a big um, location. So it's, uh, the scale is, is uh, showing the, the trains smaller relative to the screen size. So if you wanted to zoom in, you can uh, use all these zoom in um, capabilities of Analogic or can use control and your mouse wheel to zoom in and see uh, the train movement with more details. How can you uh, pull a proposed rail yard from CAD to this program? So um, Analogic professional has um, CAD um, Icon, so you can you can bring in CAD drawings into any logic and um, draw your um, rail networks on top of it. But the automatic conversion of um, rail networks into any logic rail markups only happens uh, when you use a, a shape files and GIS map. Um, so where did you download Chicago and Minneapolis shape files? So there are, there are many uh, resources on, on web. So if you search for um, Chicago rail network uh, shape file, you will find many websites that provide that for free. But for the purpose of this webinar, we already pulled those information. So as I said at the beginning, all the information, including the shape files, the model source, uh, and the, the, this video um, will be shared uh, via our um, website and also our um, YouTube account. So just uh, give us a few days and you will get all these uh, materials for you. Um, how to model collusion control if more than one train should move in, in the same time? So the, the collusion control that we did here is um, based on the logic that you assume that this, um, this specific yard works on. So if you need to have more than one train to be at the yard at the same time, it's, it's, there's no problem with that. But um, just you should be aware that um, there is nothing built into the logic that automatically avoids uh, co collision control for you. So you have to bake that into your logic. Um, other than that, there's nothing that uh, stops you from uh, having multiple trains in the model. And if you remember, so we have these move to train move to blocks. All of them have this out hit um, port that in case that you actually want two um, uh, trains to collide in case of like coupling two trains, uh, that is also an, an option for you. Um, so the restriction construct on one agent entering the model, is that available to other agents other than rail types? Yes. 
So this these two blocks that that we used here, restricted um, area enter and um, restricted area end, that restricts the number of agents that can enter a specific part of your uh, process, is available throughout any logic. And as you can see. Um, these blue icons are related to the generic process modeling library, and um, these um, orange ones are the Ray library, and you can use them um, um, whenever you want. So yeah, this, these um, restricted area icons could be used in any um, other type of model that you have. Um, and um, I'm just guessing what this question is about. How does the system know if the train is full or empty? So in, in, in case you wanted to, for example, keep track of if each rail car has something in it and you're unloading the rail um, um, cars at some point, you can go inside the rail car agent type and add some parameters, variables to keep track of if something is in on, on that um, rail car and if, if you picked it up and unloaded that one, so you change the value of that uh, parameter variable. And there are a couple of questions about um, how I can find more information about this library or functions that you are using in this uh, webinar. So let me show you two ways of accessing those. So when, when you are um, on and, um, any of the any logic palettes, if you hover over any icon or any, other, any block, you will get this um, uh, window popping up that, that, that uh, lets you to go directly to the help uh, section related to that specific uh, icon. So, for example, you wanted to see how what is available about train source. Let's click on that and see uh, the help article related to that. So, this is that. So, you will see some um, explanation of like the overview of how this block works. And eventually, if you go all the way down, you will see the functions that are related to this specific block. In case of um, train source, we have inject that, that lets you to inject more trains into the uh, process. So as you build your model and you feel like you, you need to know how, how much um, uh, flexibility I have with that specific block, you can go in to help and search for those specific functions. And just uh, to wrap this up, um, if you go to help and uh, uh, go to library references guide guide so you will have the specific section for rail library and everything including that um, source block that I just showed you is here so you have the overview of the um, this um, specific library all the blocks are described here um, the way you de define the um, uh, topology or rail network is also described in details here so this is how you can navigate through the help as well. Okay, so um, I think I, our time is up. And, and uh, as I said, everything related to webinar will be shared with you, the source code, the video, um, some instructions of how to build the model, and also this uh, Q&A section. Um, thank you very much for attending our webinar, and have a great week. Thank you.